A few hours ago, a significant earthquake shook the Papua region in the far eastern part of Indonesia, west-northwest of Abapura, near Sarmi. The first bulletins reported a magnitude of 6.5, while revised readings from some services indicated 6.3. This difference is not a contradiction. Preliminary magnitudes are calculated by different networks using methods and data sets that arrive at slightly different times. Fine adjustments occur as more seismograms are incorporated. The USGS recorded the event as magnitude 6.3, moment magnitude, MWW, with a depth of approximately 6.2 miles, 10 kilometers, and an origin time of about 8.24 a.m. UTC on August 12, 2025. At the same time, the Pacific Tsunami Warning Center issued an informational statement citing a magnitude of 6.5 with coordinates near 2.1 degrees south and 139 degrees east, highlighting the absence of a tsunami threat based on available data, something crucial for coastal communities. These informational advisories serve to say, yes, there was a strong quake, and there is no dangerous wave threat now helping to avoid panic and guide local authorities. International media outlets also reported on the event. Reuters mentioned a magnitude of 6.5 for Western Papua, citing the German GFZ Center, which often publishes quick estimates, while regional newspapers reported 6.3 and reinforced that there was no tsunami alert. In the Straits Times, for example, the note emphasized precisely the absence of tsunami risk. In summary, it was a strong, shallow, and widely felt quake, but with no tsunami danger according to official agencies. If you saw maps marking the epicenter as 120 miles, 193 kilometers, west-northwest of Abapura, that comes from the USGS page. Tsunami bulletins, on the other hand, show the point as near the north coast of Irianjaya, Papua, using different geographic names for the same large region. Such small label misalignments are common. What matters? Location in Papua, shallow depth, about 6.2 miles or 10 kilometers, magnitude between 6.3 and 6.5, and no generation of a dangerous tsunami. The impacts felt, why depth matters, and what to expect in the coming hours. Even without a tsunami, a quake in the six-point range can cause local damage, especially in vulnerable structures near the epicenter. Shaking of this strength can strongly jolt furniture, knock items off shelves, and crack poorly reinforced walls. Being shallow, around 6.2 miles or 10 kilometers, the energy dissipates less before reaching the surface, increasing the intensity felt in nearby areas. At the time of the first reports, there was no tsunami alert and no widespread confirmed destruction, but local teams often take hours to consolidate data in remote, forested regions. Why no tsunami? Because tsunami-generating earthquakes typically involve significant vertical displacement of the seafloor along thrust faults and subduction zones, with geometries and depths that favor pushing water upward. Not every coastal quake meets those criteria. The warning center's quick models detected no relevant sea level rise. Hence, the statement highlighted no tsunami threat. In the hours and days ahead, aftershocks are normal. The rule of thumb, the larger the main shock, the greater the likelihood and number of aftershocks, most smaller than the main quake and decreasing over time. Agencies such as BMKG, the Indonesian Meteorology and Geophysics Service, and USGS update catalogs continuously. It's useful to follow their dashboards listing quakes above magnitude 5.0 in Indonesia. The positive side is that Indonesia has invested in alert systems and community training since past tragedies. A recent report highlighted sirens with greater range, integration of telephone and radio systems and periodic drills, measures that do not eliminate risk but reduce vulnerability when combined with proper construction and evacuation routes. Challenges remain, infrastructure, buoy maintenance, coastal urbanization, but progress is being made, learning from the past. To understand the present, it's worth remembering Indonesia's seismic history. In 2004, the world witnessed the 9.1 megathrust earthquake along the Sunda subduction zone, generating the Indian Ocean tsunami that resulted in massive loss of life and destruction, especially in Aceh, Sumatra. This event reshaped research, response protocols, and risk communication strategies. Years later, in 2018, Palu, on Sulawesi Island, suffered a strong earthquake accompanied by a tsunami and devastating liquefaction. There, the combination of a strike-slip fault with complex geometry, coastal topography, and a narrow bay amplified the waves. 
Indonesian experts pointed to gaps in the buoy network and evacuation infrastructure, highlighting how urban planning and community education are critical. These points remain under discussion and improvement. Returning to Papua, the tectonics are also complex. The region lies at the meeting point of microplates and island arcs, where subduction, thrust faults, and strike-slip faults coexist. Strong quakes, like today's 6.3 to 6.5, are not rare in the Pacific Ring of Fire context. The good news is that historical events have provided valuable lessons. Clear alerts, marked escape routes, drills, emergency kits, and reinforced buildings save lives when seconds count. These cases show a pattern. Prediction alone is not enough. Preparation is essential. When the population knows what to do, drop cover hole during shaking, evacuate coasts immediately after a long or strong quake, seek higher ground, the chances of avoiding loss of life increase significantly. The Papua quake reinforces three messages. First, Indonesia will continue to shake. It's part of its tectonic geography. Second, the difference between tragedy and resilience lies less in if it will happen and more in how ready we are. Third, clear communication saves lives, including by avoiding rumors that create panic. In the short term, expect aftershocks near the epicenter, generally smaller and less frequent over time. The standard advice applies Secure loose objects, review evacuation routes, keep a basic kit, water, flashlight, radio, medicines, check the home structure, and follow BMKG and local authority advisories. In the medium term, each event like this pushes for continued improvements. Monitoring, sirens, school education, neighborhood drills, and building inspections and risk zones. Finally, it's important to combat myths. Every big earthquake generates a tsunami. No. If there is no alert, I don't need to evacuate. In coastal areas, if the shaking is long and strong, evacuate to higher ground immediately, even without an alert, and then check official channels. These well-repeated practices save lives.